Hello, welcome to another episode of Wisdom Personified, Conversations with Durum Somi. Thank you for following us on this journey. I am so excited today. I am speaking to one of my BFFs. Yep, yep. Yep. <laughs> Tara Duratoye. Remember how long it took me to get there. <laughs> so we have to give her a round of applause. <laughs> She's the founder and CEO of House of Tara International. It is a beauty and makeup um, company, and it's really one to know. And I really would like to invite you on this journey as I chat to my friend. How are you? Excellent. Always lovely to be with you here in South Africa. Yeah. Always lovely. So, you know, I always try and find tricks to get you here. Yes, any opportunity. <laughs> any Tara, opportunity. you look stressed. Come yes, to come to uh, South Africa. <laughs> Tara, you look slim. Come to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But uh, thank you for making the time for us. Pleasure, yeah. pleasure. You know, we speak about a whole lot of things, but I don't think I've ever asked you, what did you do for your part, pastime when you were young? What did you do for fun? Daydreaming. Really? <laughs> a lawyer that daydreams? <laughs> yes, yes. I love to read um, and, you know, just go into the world of the writer. Um, of course, you know how a bit of a traumatic experience I had as a child. Um, so every opportunity to kind of, you know, travel away from my reality, you know, um, was something I was always happy to do. And so reading was a great past, pastime for me growing yeah. up. And you still do that, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I do, but not as much as I wish. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine? Yeah. You're always so busy. Yeah. And what was the vision you had for your life? I mean, even though you were going through a difficult time, I'm sure mm -hmm. something helped you through that. And are you living what you thought you would. So, so I thought I was going to be a successful lawyer, mm -hmm. a very successful lawyer. Yeah, at least you got that right. You got to be a lawyer. Yes, yeah. yes. But I thought I would be practicing and I would speak Spanish and French <laughs> and I would be married to this amazing guy and have an amazing family. I didn't get around to uh, practicing law, uh, but I would say that I'm a successful entrepreneur. So in a, t in a sense, the success is still there. Um, and, you know, happily married. And that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our hubby. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I think it's one of the high points uh, of my adult life is, is my marriage to this amazing man who's extremely thoughtful, kind, you know, giving and generous. You know, my first introduction to him was in 2013 Isn't when I was hosting um, the Fortune 500 mentees in South Africa. Yes, yes, our reunion. And this reunion. guy phones and he wants to talk to me and he says, thank you. Yes, he's very for polite. For preparing yeah. this yes. lovely journey for my wife yes. and treating her. I was like, oh. is this guy for real? <laughs> wow. But, but I mean, after all these years, he's still the same, right? Yeah. yeah. And every time yes. I just think, golly gumptious, wow, amazing. Yeah. Um, who has been the most influential person in your life and how have they been that? You know, when I read that question, if I wanted to give a political answer, mm. I would give somebody else's name. But you're my friend, and I can be real with you. I, th I believe without a doubt that Fela, my mm. husband, is definitely the most influential, who's been the most influential person in my, in my life, especially in my adult life. Um, and why? Because, um, of course, because of my childhood. Um, it's great to be able to be in a space with someone who uh, loves you unconditionally, um, cares, pays attention, wants to nurture you to be the best that you can be. And then seeing the example of leadership of a man who's committed to his country, committed to his family. Yeah. Um, it's, he's definitely the most influential person in my life um, and seeing how kind he is towards people, um, giving towards people given to his country as well. Yeah, which most people misunderstand mm. because I think when he was running mm. for the presidential mm -hmm. office, mm. people just thought, why would this guy? And to understand, I mean, I met him in, mm. I, when did I meet him? Yeah. And already I called you and I said, Is he going to ever become president of Nigeria? Yeah, because yeah. he just oozes yes. love for Nigeria. Yes. I've yes. never, yes. Yes. I love Nigeria yes. because of things fall apart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she not she I know. Yes. And, um, you yes. know, but I've never come across a human being so in love with his country. I thought I loved my country. I know, I know. I feel like it's, uh, extremely, extremely passionate. And people misunderstood because many people are not patriotic. So they can't, they, they can't relate 
because, and they can't understand that this could be sincere and this could be real because there are very few people who are that way. Um, Without wanting something, something yes. yeah, but financial benefits out yeah, of it, yes. you know. So they can't believe it because there are more people who are not like that than people who are actually that way. And, and I think to a large extent, sometimes when we see people and we can't, uh, we can't explain, uh, because we can't relate, then we have to find reasons why, you know, you look at a successful woman and then you say, well, she's successful because her father is successful, or, oh, she's successful because her husband is successful. There's always one reason why they're successful. To make a, to, it's almost like you're trying to make a point to say, well, the reason why I am not this way is because I don't have what this person has. Yes. So what's really the most important thing? What's truly important in your life? Um, relationships. Relationships. Um, I think that the world is, I mean, thinking about my entrepreneurship journey, I, you know, it's, it's still relationship in terms of people. And you were there yesterday when I was speaking at the conference and I made a point to say, if, if there's one advice that I would take, I would, I wish somebody had told me before I started my entrepreneurship journey is the, is the importance of people. Right. And it's still the same thing, even in our general world, uh, whether as a married woman or as a friend, it's so relationships. Yeah. Uh, it brings color to the world. It brings color to our lives. It brings variety. People are different. Um, I mean, we were together in Spain just a month ago, and I have lovely memories of that time. Yeah. I was here in 2013 for the reunion in South Africa, and I thoroughly enjoyed that time as well. Um, I was in the mall today trying to get an Uber, and Labour sent a message saying, you remember the hotel you stayed in that you forgot your shoes, right? Did you forget <laughs> shoes? Yeah, at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The last time you were here, and it was nice to to have those memories yes. of, of of us in the last ten yeah. years, and to think that even now here I am again because of relationships. Um, so I think it's it's so important, and I and I and I wish that we would appreciate people more, and see them for who they are, be l less judgmental, yes. um, accept them for the beauty that they bring to the world, and yeah. and, and love love on them. And I mean, the one thing that we did share was the pain that we felt when um, some of the violence was happening in South Africa mm. and to kind of say, because of the people I know, yes. I can never no. see a person as an outsider yes. or even yes. inflict pain no. on them. Mm. Um, and it was nice to see that in some areas where we even disagreed, we made a point to say, you know what, remember that we are sisters. Remember that we've built a relationship and this mustn't affect that relationship that we've had over the years we started to share pictures of you know years yeah. different times when i was in sabbatical because it is Kenya. painful it is because it's it's, it's it like we all get into our little corners mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and trying to defend our country yes and, yes and, yes and, and like nigerians yeah. and you were like the south africans yeah and, almost, and we're know? all patriotic about our countries <laughs> exactly but ultimately we're africans yes you know yes yes, yes. that's most important yeah, absolutely i know what makes you special to me anyway? What do you think your unique value proposition is? I think it's my positive energy. Uh, positive energy, my warmth. And the energy. Yes. You don't stop. <laughs> okay, so you agree. I mean, <laughs> I'm most of the time I'm concerned about you. You're dizzy. <laughs> Tara, I'm dizzy in South Africa. <laughs> I feel dizzy looking at you on social media. <laughs> yes, it's like too much. I can't. I thought my life was hectic. Yeah, but somehow you still feel grounded in that. How do you do that? Nature. Um, also being aware of, of my shortcomings and my frailties. And understanding that the world is such a, you know, a fragile place. So there's a strong sense of knowing nature, being close to nature. You know how much I love the greens. I would do anything to have my feet on ground. I think that helps to be grounded. But also realizing that, you know, I'm not a superhero. And as much as I would like to do be a messiah and save the whole world. I'm, I have a lot of shortcomings and things that prevent me from being all that I want to be. And I think the reality of that is what makes me uh, remain grounded. So you the founder and CEO of House of Tara International. Mm -hmm. You are a pioneer in the beauty and makeup industry in, South Af in Nigeria. <laughs> yes. I'm, you know I'm trying to get you to come to South Africa. Yes, with, yes. I love your products. <laughs> um, what has been the most challenging experience as an entrepreneur for you? And what can you share with other hmm. aspirant entrepreneurs? I've had many, I think, d at different stages and the yeah. growth stage of the business, there are different challenges. But one challenge that I've experienced, whether I was, if it didn't happen in the growth stage or happen in the startup stage, it's something I would never forget and still has a strong impression on me. And it was when my products were counterfeited in China. Yeah. And wow. 
And I remember going uh, on a business trip to China and I went to an open market and a lady recognized my accent that I was Nigerian and asked me if I was interested in Tara products. And I, hmm. I, was, I was shocked. Especially since you know you're not exporting yes, to, the to China, right? And, and, she, and she felt a need to convince me. And so she took me into her store and uh, brought out her books, her receipt booklets to show me how great the product was and how much they were exporting to places like Congo, Cameroon. And I was, it was like my world was coming to an end at that very moment. Because when you've built a brand and through with uh, sweat and blood, you, you feel like it's you, it's a part of, it's such a part of who you are. And to just have that one person taking advantage of that, it was heartbreaking. And of course, the Nigerian market was completely flooded by that. We lost um, wow. a lot of revenue based on that as well, because now the price was like half and the packaging was almost exactly the same. Like it was difficult for, for people to be able to tell the difference in terms of the packaging. Um, and that was one season where we, we decided to think about how could we fix this problem and we realized the problem was bigger than than what one company could do uh, we engaged the government and of course coming from a country like nigeria where regulators don't do what they're supposed to do uh, our business really really suffered um, we suffered um, decline and you know you're competing with yourself in the market where people are buying tara because they think it's tara and it's not really tara but then they've bought tara um, and it's one of the most challenging seasons. And, and, and I, I'd like to talk to aspiring um, entrepreneurs to say resilience and having a, a very, very strong capacity to manage challenges is one of the strongest skills that entrepreneurs need to have. Your mental health is so important and you have to surround yourself with a lot of positivity um, because when you go through these sort of traumatic seasons, whether it's, it's fraud in your business or whether it's counterfeiting um, in, in, uh, in you know, in our own space, or it's government regulations that have just suddenly changed overnight, um, or it's double taxing in our case where, you know, we're taxed federal level, state level, local government level. It's ridiculous, right? And you keep doing this and keep trying as hard as you can, and you're hit with all these challenges day in, day out. Um, you've got to be mentally strong. And, yeah. and so I'd say to entrepreneurs, learn any, everything you need to learn in business school, but remember that your mental state um, it's going to be one of the things that help, helps you to protect you um, to stay resilient in tough times. And you're still like plowing through it, hey? Yes, we have to keep at it because the vision is beyond our current uh, challenge. Yeah. And, and the challenges haven't stopped. They've just evolved. Sometimes they've even gotten bigger, uh, but also it means that we also have capacity to, to handle more. Uh, as we stretch and as we grow, and that's what growth also does for you. Uh, but we've we, we've kept our eyes on our vision, you know, as opposed to being distracted by the challenges. Otherwise, you get consumed by the challenges yeah. and miss out on your focus and yeah. your goal. And you got a good team. Mm. I mean, I was privileged to have a session with them mm. on leadership, mm. and they really focused, and they're always looking to see where they can improve yes. and what their shortcomings. Yes, yes. I mean, the last time I was there. Mm. You know, I thought, how rude. Yes. As I'm talking to them, next thing they diverted. Yes. And I'm like, well, well, what's happening? Should I leave the room? They're like, no, you, you hit it on the head. So we have to have this conversation before yes. you go. Yes, you know, yes. it's like yes. we understand where we're going wrong. Yes, yes. Gee, I hardly meet I, I, I think, leaders like that. Yeah, I think it's one of the greatest gifts yes. at House of Tara is our people and a great team who are completely committed to the vision. And this also I said at the conference yesterday, and I wish... I had learned how to be a good manager, but also a good leader earlier. And I think the company would have gone much further. Um, but in terms of being able to lead, lead a team, being able to share the vision, communicate it in a way that people are excited about oh. it, they see their, their part, the part that they can play in it, they see how it benefits them personally, um, and they see a, a, a leader who's committed to their well-being and cares about what they care about. Um, I think that has definitely helped to get their hearts and their mind uh, to, the, to the vision of, of the organization. Yeah. And it's really there. Mm. So you studied law mm -hmm. um, and you started the business while you were studying law at the University of Lagos. Mm -hmm. um, but about two years ago, you decided to take a year's uh, sabbatical away from the business. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has been your daily bread for half of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you cope? And what did you learn about yourself being away from your baby? 
one of the things I learned about myself was I tied my identity too much with my, the success of my business. And, and so what that means is, is that I didn't see myself more than the company that I had built. And there is no one person who isn't more than, than one aspect of their lives. Um, and I think that, that sharing that identity so, t so strongly with the business was also a limitation for me. Um, what that meant is if, there, if anything had gone wrong with the business, then I would feel like I've lost my life. Um, so that's one of the things I, I realized about myself. I also realized that I didn't know when to stop. I was not able to self-regulate. Um, I was becoming more and more stressed, but not realizing that I was stressed because I just kept moving and moving. And in doing so, you lose gratitude in terms of um, the milestones that you've met and being grateful for those places that you are and being so consumed with, with the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And I think the sabbatical forced me to pause, to pause and take in the environment taking um, the reality. One of the things that happened to me for many years, every year around September, October, I just blank out. And obviously the, it, it was a sign of being burnt out. And I was being burnt out every year, year in, year out. Um, if you look at my profile, I was a pioneer of this and that, and pioneer of this and that. So it seemed like I was constantly new, doing new things, constantly being uh, in front of the, of the market, constantly being innovative. And the pressure of, of of trying to stay relevant. The pressure of trying to sustain that relevance mm. was, um, was draining on any one person, on any one visionary. And um, the sabbatical forced me to you know, rethink these things and reprioritize and say, well, there's some places that we have not done well and it's okay for us to learn from our mistakes, the places where we've succeeded at. Let's be grateful. Let's appreciate those moments. Let's take it in and enjoy every moment of it as opposed to saying, well, what's next? But also the one thing you realize, you've built a business. You yes, know, the yes, fact yes, that you can walk away yes, and yes, come back and yes, it's still standing. Yes, yes. And, and also giving the leadership team the opportunity to, to be without me being in every decision, in every corner, in every cough mm. and every smile. Um, to, to, to let, let a team explore their own potential. And it was great because many a times people say when there's a challenge, you sort of feel like Ty is going to fix it. But when I wasn't there, it forced people to begin to rise up to the occasion. And it was nice to see what they were able to do in that season. Yeah. And I was grateful that you came to spend time with me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it yes, was nice. Yes, I followed you everywhere. I mean, it was nice to be able to you know, I remember when my, my assistant called you to say, well, Tara wants to come to South Africa. And you're like, does she have meetings? And she <laughs> says, no. What is she going to be doing? She's going to be following you around every day. <laughs> and you're like, really? <laughs> How is that possible? And it was the, the capacity to just pause, mm. right? And I would go with you to the gym. Yes. Even though I couldn't do any of the exercises. Yeah. I keep telling people, just because I've gained does not mean I'm not fit. It's unbelievable. You leave you couldn't I couldn't up. do anything. Yes. Like, I was like... But I'm slimmer than her. Yes. What, what does this mean, yeah. right? Yeah, but I could, I, yeah, terrible yeah. and sh shameful, actually, <laughs> shameful. But it was nice to be able to go with you to the restaurants and eat. And theater. Yeah, theater, yeah, you yeah, know, and just have a good you. time. Yeah. And then go back home refreshed. And not, and even you went for a board meeting, I sat outside the door, remember? <laughs> <laughs> so that was nice. It was nice to be jobless, really. Yeah. To just be like, nothing to do. What are we doing today? Yes. Are you going to the gym? Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, entrepreneurs usually cite, cite access to capital as a barrier to starting a business. I know you were once denied a bank loan that you desperately needed. What is the wisdom you can share with entrepreneurs to overcome their finance hurdles? I think uh, sometimes the banks need to be reassured. Mm. And the reassurance is, is, is how, do, how well are we banking our revenue? Mm. Um, sometimes with businesses where you have a lot of small cash coming in on a daily basis, there's a tendency for that cash not to be banked in some cases. If you can do that, then it can help the banks to have faith in your ability to, um, to repay. Um, I think relationships are important yet again. Uh, for us to have that facility, it was somebody who knocked on somebody's door. My mentor picked up the phone and called the MD of the bank and said, you know, listen to the story. I believe in what she's doing and I want you to. Sometimes people just need to do that sponsoring, right? You know? And just open those doors. And that's exactly what she did. Yeah. And she coached me and said, you know, these are the questions she's going to be asking you. Make sure to answer this way and that way, because when you answer this way, then you can get his attention. And, and 
it was great to be able to see that yet again, this was a banker who was committed to small businesses, um, but I was fortunate to have access to his ear at that time to be able to get that access. How do we undermine, I always say, no matter how successful you think somebody is, mm -hmm. you can always still help. Mm -hmm. And even successful people are always receptive to help. Yes. So having a sponsor is always welcomed. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I say to people sometimes, as I've grown also, um, because to whom much is given, much is also required. Um, if you're someone who's, who's, who doors have been opened for, you need to be able to open doors for other people. And many times I realize that when, we, when I network, I'm more deliberate about networking because many times the connections you're making are not just for you, they're for somebody else. Yes. And, and so I'm more intentional in, in how I network be, because I'm thinking outside of just me um, and yeah. in particular. And as women, I mean, the one thing that inspired me with our trip around Spain, mm -hmm. that we had a session around the table, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as the four of us, and yes. we said, this is unacceptable. Yes, yes. What are we going to start doing for each other? Mm -hmm. And we, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's nice that we travel. It's nice that we yeah. call each other and have nice chats on our WhatsApp group and yes. take pictures and send about the weather and where we are. But it's also important that those relationships are beneficial yes. in terms economically beneficial yes. uh, so so if i see a board appointment coming up i should be able to recommend that oh you know you're looking for somebody international yeah. this is my friend who i can vouch for that can join this board um you can also look for business opportunities for my products to be distributed in, in south africa As I'm always. yes mm -hmm. yes yes um, so it's great um to have that, those conversations yeah. but as women spend time complaining yes. That we don't help each other, yes, and yes. we can be deliberate about yes, it and yes. intentional. Yeah, I'm, I'm more intentional. Yeah, about yeah. it. It may not come to us naturally. Yeah, but I think we're intentional. We can work at so. it. Yeah. What is the one behavior or trait that you have observed that ruins leaders, and how can um, other people avoid falling foul? Psychophancy and not listening to counsel. Uh, and believe in your own hype. And sometimes when you become successful, there's a tendency for you to, to have seen so many successes that you think that you would always know it all. And sometimes the knowing it all is not even conscious, it's unconscious. Um, you're with your team of people who don't give you feedback because you've trained them not to give you feedback in your attitude. Um, and, and so therefore, when the team sees that there's something wrong, they don't tell you because um, they, there's a tendency, they know that it's tendency for you to, you know, be defensive and sometimes take, take, take negative actions against the person who's giving that feedback. Um, so one of the things I always say to my team is, um, culturally, you know, this may be a problem where we're raised in a way, in a patriarchal society where you don't speak to your elders and what have you. But with, within this company culture, I want that to be different. And I want to be told when you think um, things, I'm not doing things right, call me out on it politely, but do. Yeah, um, respectfully can do respect, so. Respectfully, but do, because um, sometimes I'm looking in this direction, I can't see my right, my left, or my back. And you can. And so when you make that, when you make the assumption that I know it all, then you're allowing me to fail. And so if you truly love and you're committed to me, then you need to let me know. And I think a lot of, of leaders are not given, are not either positioning themselves to hear the truth, uh, or sometimes uh, the team that they've built can't stand up and let them know yeah. what they're doing wrong. They're so intimidated. Yes, by You them. know, uh, just while I got you and training your wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, I've been getting kind of a number of requests about bullying in the workplace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do you encounter things like that? I mean, what advice oh, yes. do you... Oh, yes. I was in a meeting recently and there was a young, there was a lady in the team who backed at her, co her colleague at a meeting and the colleague was giving a feedback about something this person had done and the way she backed at this colleague of, her, of her, hers, I made a point to mention to HR that they need to spend more time doing it, like a 360 degrees on the people who work in her team. Because if you have the capacity to back out, bark, bark at someone who's your pair, I wonder what you would do you if somebody who's subordinates to you. Um, and sometimes we need to pay attention. This is some of the gifts of being a woman, is our feminine energies, our capacity to be intuitive, right? Uh, a man may have been in that room and not realized what that meant. Uh, but you know, we need to embrace our feminine energy to be able to say, how do we use that to f foster our leadership? And by doing that, I can tell whether her team are suffering from her bullying 
and there isn't a system internally to to get people to speak up when they're being bullied. And sometimes they don't even know they're being bullied. Yeah. Um, they just think that this is normal because you are a boss. Yes. Um, it's unfortunate because it gets, gives the culture, the environment, a, a toxic environment, and people can't really thrive in a toxic a toxic environment. And and we're very big on anti-bullying uh, within our organization. Yeah. yeah. That was very observant of you. Mm -hmm. I hope um, somebody needs to hear that today. Do you have a bucket list? No. I've actually never asked you that. Mm -mm. I don't actually. But if I did, speaking yeah. French would be on the top of the list. Why haven't you? I actually, during the sabbatical, I, I got a, friend, a French lesson teacher, but mm -hmm. I did the lessons maybe for only two months and dropped it. So I guess I'm lazy, but it's really the thing. I wish they need to do the I homework. Wish, I wish somebody just needs to put something in my head. <laughs> and then, and then you can and speak, then I can speak French. You know, yeah. when I travel to a French country, I, I I watch TV in French. Yeah, so that and you pretend. Hope, no, yes. no, I just pretend to be French. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did one year French. So, uh, pretend to yeah. be French. And you know, Nigeria is surrounded by all French-speaking countries: Cameroon, yes, uh, to the Ivory east, Coast, yes, yeah. yes, um, Niger to the north, and Benin Republic. Uh, to the West. Yeah, it's interesting. And still, yeah. and so we had to do French in, in, in school as part of uh, uh, the curriculum. Yeah. But hey, maybe one day when I'm 50, I'll be able to speak French. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favorite topic to yeah. ask about, but you know, Africa is smart in perceptions of corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your view of this and how can we change this image? Unfortunately, it's an image that's a reality. And I'm, I'm very big on fixing what is underneath uh, rather than fixing the image of it. Um, and until we fix that, we have poor leadership within the continent. Um, what can we do is to, div to begin to train our younger ones to see leadership differently and see leadership as service. Um, and if we spend time in, in the generation of those who are 15 year olds, 14, 12, 12, 10 years old, we may be able to change our continent. But until then, we have a long way to go because we still have leaders who think that they're there to, for their own benefits as opposed to for the service of the people. Gosh, Africans. Yes. Well, there's hope if we take the time to train the next generation, there yeah. is hope. But if we don't, then we're gonna be stuck in this rut. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can talk forever, as you know. <laughs> so we have to wrap up. Yes. <laughs> yes. What wisdom, if this is the last conversation you ever have, what is the wisdom we would like to share? Live life radiantly. Hmm? Live life radiantly. It's a choice. It's about perspective. No matter how difficult things are, this life can be lived radiantly. That's up to you. Um, you can look at the glass half empty or half full. Um, they always tell people who are about to die, you know, if you had, what would you do? And they want to live their lives. They want to spend that life's last moment doing what they love. But guess what? Why don't we do that today? Yes. Why must we wait to get to that point mm -hmm. where we've been asked? So I'm more intentional about ensuring that I can hear the sound of the birds outside my garden. When the rain is falling, I, I want to smell, you know, the dust on the ground and hear the sound of the wind um, and pay attention to my friends, um, give, and serve other, others, but do the things that I enjoy, which is develop relationships, nurture relationships, and enjoy, enjoy every moment. Um, that's up to us, so live life radiantly. And you are radiant. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, yeah, I really pleasure. enjoy that. Yes, I did as it's well. It's always like, it's like we knowing each other again for the first time. Yes, I'm always yes. refreshed. Yes. Thank I you. hope you enjoyed that. That has been my conversation with Tara. I love her very much. <laughs> and I love her too. <laughs> Until next time, uh, do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wisdom Personified. And until next time, thank you.